Some brand new stuff here I'm going to play for you on Saturday night. This is a what? And uh, two hours until midnight. I don't even have her up. The song is called Token. The band is Project Renegade. They are from Athens, Greece. It is a brand new song from them. And that's what we do. Two hours to midnight is the metal show here on MMS. Me, Corey Roddick, Pat Butler. Play brand new stuff like this. Play a local music. Got a bunch of those lined up for you. Some classic metal in there, too. So play some old At The Gates this weekend. Play some old Fishbone for you. Dig into that. And you can always submit uh, your band or a request or whatever to htm at wmms.com. Uh, Jim Florentine's going to be back in here tomorrow. He's doing a show at the Winchester in Lakewood tomorrow night. So we'll get set up for a, a riff off with Jim Florentine. We haven't done that in many, many years with him. I haven't seen him in a minute. Guardians come. What? Uh, it was just a burp. <laughs> <laughs> and I had my mouth closed and I moved away from the microphone. Oh. And it was all in the neck. That was a throat belch. Yeah, that was a throat one. A throaty boy. Oh, that's a big load. Guardians complete the sweep of the Oakland A's this afternoon. They're staying at home to host the Milwaukee Brewers tomorrow night, game one of three. That's 7 10 is the start. And you're going to be there. You're an MMS. I'm sorry? You're going to go? I'm going to go. Didn't you say you're going to the game on Friday? No, no, no. I said I'm going to a ball game. Oh, but not tomorrow there. night. Nope. He's watching his kid play. I'm going to Lake Erie Crushers game. Oh, Frontier Crushers. League baseball. He doesn't baseball. even go to the headliner baseball nope. games. <laughs> Leaves after the opener. He only watched the first four innings. No, it's a bunch of us, um, our friends from the neighborhood. It's out in Avon. We all meet at the Crushers game. It's fun. Got a little VIP table, a whole bit. Right? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you guys friends. are too cool mm-hmm. for Frontier League baseball. Sorry. I mean, when you can go to a Major League Baseball game, you go to a Major League Baseball game. I can you do that any time I want. You a hipster Frontier League one. I get it. Yeah, you've it's never been to a cool. Crushers game, have you? Not exactly. I have, absolutely. That, then it's you know it's not hipsters. Mm-hmm. But you, Anywho, but you going is tomorrow hipster. night is what we'll be doing for people who are keeping their bingo card at home. And then... Um, Blah, blah, blah. Hey, speaking of the olds, RIP to an 89-year-old guy who died. I want to give you his name because I want to give him his his proper due here. Uh, Donald Triplett. He's only one. Uh, Triplett with two Ts has died at the age of 89. He's notable for being the first person ever diagnosed with autism. Oh, wow. Autism's only been around 89 years? Well, it's only been diagnosed well, for diagno- 89 years. They didn't I know it's, diagnose I know him. I know people have been autistic <laughs> his entire right, life. Right, but like they didn't diagnose him as soon as he came out oh, of yeah. the womb. They're like, right. well, that's an autistic baby right there. <laughs> I don't know. There's one thing I, I think I've never seen this before, but that baby is autistic. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how old he was when they diagnosed him. I thought we could find that out. He started working at the Bank of Forest in a small Mississippi town, about 40 miles east of Jackson. Started working there in 1958, and he was a fixture at the bank for 65 years. And he was identified as Donald T. in a 1943 research paper. And he was also profiled in some PBS documentaries. But he was the very first person diagnosed with autism. He was first examined in 1938. So how, how old would he have been? Wait, when was he born? Well, I mean, he died at 89. Oh, don't right? make me go backwards, math. No, hold on. He was born in 1934. So when he was four years old... He was examined by a child psychiatrist and would later become the first person diagnosed with autism. Well, they shouldn't have called it autism. They should have named it after him. Yeah, where did that come from? Triplets. 
The child psychiatrist's paper elaborated on the idea that autism is related to a lack of parental warmth. Uh -huh. It was originally called the refrigerator mother theory. Wait, 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 wait. I thought autism was from vaccines. Autism is well, from, from refrigerators. It's from additives in food products and 5G. And the, if the wind blows a certain direction in the house in which you were born. Huh. Interesting. All true. Anyway, Forest, Mississippi is where he was born and raised and lived. He was known worldwide as case number one. <laughs> That's nice. Ah, the first person to be diagnosed with autism has died. Lady in Florida died and left her entire estate to her cats because people are still morons. This is the, uh, you're thinking of Aristocats. Never seen Aristocats. Well, this is the entire plot of it. Oh, is it really somebody yeah, leaves their money to their cats? <laughs> yes. Oh, a wealthy oh woman hence the in name. France. Right? No, yeah. That means there's a racist song coming. A wealthy woman in France. <laughs> Is uh, that Aristocrats with the Siamese? Yes. Yeah. Aris, a wealthy <laughs> woman in France leaves her estate to her cats, so her butler tries to kill the cats so that he gets all her money. But Siamese that's cats, that's Lady in the Tramp. I know that. We are Siamese. That's Lady in the Tramp. Oh, okay. No, Aristoc there's another one in Aristocats where he's playing the piano with chopsticks. There probably and, is, but the, <laughs> no, I'm telling you, the one he's ta the one he's talking that's what about I was, is I was from, Lady the one from Lady in the Tramp. Oh, uh, well, but, there's a yeah. Siamese cat playing the piano with um, chopsticks, chopsticks and... singing about different Chinese uh, yeah. okay, so they, dishes. They have like so a rice did, patty hat so on they in the whole bit. Two racisms. Yes. <laughs> Well, yeah, and the big black cat has, like, a black accent, and he's, like, a jive turkey. <laughs> like, they, like, it's every single... And then there's, like, an orange cat that wears a dirty hat, and he has a Mexican accent. Like, they... And, but they all live in Paris, so it's... um, And these are all dirty street cats. It's all very... uh. So, in a strange way, they're all equal. That they're all dirty street cats? Yes. Except for the ones that don't have an accent. Because they're the Aristocats. They're the Aristocats. So there because is, they were they're given money. But it's the white cat. Just handed it to them. Try to unfold Nobody wants this. to work. The mom is a white cat, and she has an orange cat, a black cat, and a white cat. Kittens. Has her kids? Yes, she has different kittens. These weren't pets from a human family that found their way into the streets or anything like that? No, they are like street cats. Mm -hmm. But... Well, Nancy Sauer died at age 84, and she had a huge home in Tampa and a lot of money, and she left it all to her cats. So well, how does that it's work? It's literally what this movie is. Her will says, because Florida's crazy and there are no rules, her will says that her house, her estate, cannot be sold until her last cat dies. <laughs> Sounds like, though, that a judge is going to say, uh, no. According to the Humane Society of Tampa Bay, the cats have continued to inhabit the 4,000-square-foot home. Oh, my God. <laughs> Dude, this is the... Are you messing with me? This is literally the plot of Arista Cats. I just can't believe... Listen, I, I understand being... Um, I understand being so irretrievably hurt by the human race that your entire world becomes your pets. But these dummies who leave all this money to their dumb animals. Like, cut the Humane Society a check and send the animals there and donate the rest of your money to humans who need help. So the Humane Society of Tampa, obviously, they want to, you know, get all up in this. They've had the cats, but a judge is uh, trying to put the kibosh on this whole thing. I love that Mary is so tickled by it. Because it's I, this was one of my favorite movies growing up. I didn't like that one. So I loved it. The minute that he said that, I was like, oh, you're this is that movie. <laughs> I like the Aristocrats. I've never seen Aristocats. Yeah, it's a good one. A mother cat in 1910 and her three kitch, kittens live in Paris mm -hmm. with a retired opera diva. Mm -hmm. The madam declares that her vast fortune will be first left to her cats and then revert to her butler once they all pass away. Oh, so the butler's got to kill all the cats. Got oh, pickle puss Edgar. <laughs> is there a butler in this uh, Florida story? There is no butler uh, in no, this okay. story. Deviation for, you know, from the TV version. Well, life imitates art, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the Aristocats was probably written because somebody did something like this. 
This is like one of the early Disney, Disney movies because yeah. it's like that was before I was even born. And pencil lines, yeah, it was in the seventies. Like, yeah, they hmm. hadn't gotten the animation quite fluid yet. <laughs> it's not quite right. No, uh, we're talking about. Or at least in passing, talking about movies before the break there, or Bill liked Flash, and I still have to see it, but he's the only person who's told me it's good. Everybody that I know that saw it liked it. Anecdotal, Anecdotal evidence. evidence. Hey, <laughs> suck it. But that's what movies are. <laughs> movies are all yes, anecdotal evidence. Yes, it's our own personal experience. <laughs> 601. Mm-hmm. Um, there she goes again. <laughs> Just glug glug glug. She's over there drinking, yeah. uh, <laughs> guzzling water. She's so parched when she's You're in really here. You're really taking this drinking <laughs> problem to another level. Guys, I just want to relive so bad. I have to chug oh water. My God, right <laughs> give it to me right. as much as you possibly can. I'll give you a good one. I'll give you a good one. So we were talking yesterday, or or Wait, mentioned she, what? She wants no, no, to do go another. Ahead. Go she ahead, wants to do a big chug. No, it's fine. Go ahead. Come on, chug oh it up. God. Don't make me laugh because I'll spit. <laughs> No, this is new equipment. Yeah. Okay. Don't laugh. Don't think about like nun bushes. Well, you bushes talked or over anything. it. <laughs> don't think about nun bushes or. You're an idiot. All right, last one because I'm going to puke. All right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's how you're drinking water with your mouth made into a cavern so yeah. you can. Wow, she's got a cenote in her throat. That's how I consume everything corn, water. <laughs> <laughs> Corn. So She's like corn. a chicken with her head cut off. They just, just put just kernels pour, into her esophagus. You just and... pour corn into your face. Yeah, I have Brian cut it off the cob into my throat. Yeah. <laughs> Honey, it's a corn night. I eat it like a boa constrictor. <laughs> <laughs> it's feeding you mice. Sliders. Some people, all really, the same. Some people really enjoy that noise and motion. <laughs> so tired. Why are you so tired? Uh, I've been up at like 8 a.m. every day this week. 8 a.m. every day, ladies and gentlemen. So what time are you going to bed? Dude, like normal? You'd think by the end of the week you'd be used to getting up at 8 a.m. No, it still sucks. Every hmm. day it sucks. But today was worth it because I had to take my car into Cherry's North Coast Auto. Bam. Give me an oil change. Mm-hmm. Anyway, go ahead. Move no, just see. mentioned in passing yesterday, because we've seen billboards for it, the Jennifer Lawrence... I just call them R-rated boards. sex comedy. It's called No Hard Feelings. I heard there's a naked fight scene in it. It's on Reddit. So there is a, it's actually very funny. There is a full, Jennifer Lawrence is the only one who's naked. On the beach, there's a scene where I think she and the boyfriend are skinny dipping or something, and he's out in the water, and some kids are on the beach screwing around. A full-on Jennifer Lawrence naked fight scene where she's the only one naked. So Jennifer Lawrence must have been like, I need a hit. Because I know this is, people are writing about, are the sex comedies coming back? Because there's Bottoms and there's this one called, and again, I don't think anybody who's seen the movie is saying it's an amazing piece of work. But clearly she's like, I need a hit movie. And maybe, because she hadn't had one in a while, she's like, maybe a full nude fight scene will do it. And maybe it will. But it's online. I can't find it. I mean, go to Reddit and you'll I'm find on Reddit. Uh, you'll find Jennifer Lawrence uh, nude scene or whatever. It's like no hard feelings trailer. But she also got she was part of the fappening ten years ago, mm-hmm. right? I can't believe that's been ten years. So it's not like she's married now. She's got a kid. I mean, you know, but she's still uh, she's not forty yet. How old's Jennifer Lawrence? Thirty two. <clears throat> so she's very much not forty yet. Thirty two years old. She's lovely. She's a good actress. But she, mu- she and her management must have been like, you need a hit because you can't coast on Wait, the friggin' Hunger Games. This for- doesn't even look, it's like a picture. Well, no, it's it, somebody filmed it at a screening. It's not directly, somebody's in the audience filming it, so it's really grainy. But it's a full-on naked fight scene, like Eastern Promises, Viggo Mortensen in that movie, if people have seen that. Who's she and fighting? The kids on the beach. She's like, get the F out of here or whatever. But she like, Punches this one girl, and then the girl kicks her in the crotch, and she's holding her because she's naked the whole time. So it is funny. I mean, it's a it's a boss move to be an actress and doing that. You think she's got a lot of money for this? I just think she's like, I need a hit. I have not hit it. She's done a bunch of movies. She hasn't had a hit since uh, I don't know what. 
I mean, Hunger Games were the movies that put her on the map and made a ton of money. She's in the X Men movies, but I, and those made money, but those aren't Jennifer Lawrence vehicles, right? Oh, yeah. Passengers technically made money, but it was a not a good movie. I don't, I didn't, I can't believe people saw it, but they must have. So something like this, that's probably that was probably part of it. She's like, yeah, I'll do this. It might be really really funny. Maybe people will go see it. Now, what sucks is. You kind of want something like this to leak, but you also kind of don't. You kind of want it to be word of mouth. But I like Jennifer Lawrence. She, what was the one with, uh, um, oh, Jesus. Silver Linings. Yeah, playbook. Silver Linings Playbook. There you go. And then she was in American Hustle, but again, 10 years ago. So, yeah, I like her a lot. But I, she must she have sat down. Was in that don't look up. She was the main character in that. Well, she was in it, but that wasn't in the theaters. Like it was yeah, right to it Netflix. Was, it was the. It was during COVID. It couldn't have gone right to net. It couldn't have gone to the theaters. Was she was Netflix like the second, anyway. like the second lead, lead to uh, what's his name. Right, but I'm DiCaprio. talking about. Yeah. I'm talking about like movies that made money for that her. That movie like, didn't make money. No. No, because it was, they go, oh, we'll put it in some theater. It cost them $75 million, and I think it made under a million right, in but the it, theaters. Right, because they want people to watch it on Netflix. Right. But again, it's like music. That's why these people don't want to necessarily work for streamers, because they're not making any money off of it. I mean, she's still got a good payday for that. I'm sure she did, but I wouldn't, that was an ensemble movie. Like, I wouldn't, if I were her, I wouldn't count that. Like, she was in... Um, what was the last X Men movie she was in? The uh, the one that nobody saw. I mean, uh, the the Dark Phoenix. Yeah, right. But Jonas's wife. But the, again, those are I. I think she's great. I think she's foxy. I think she's a good actress. But those are all like ensemble pieces. Anyway, everybody's talking about the nude fight <laughs> fight scene, and it is funny because it's not like she's she doesn't have like some comic book body. She's built like a regular girl. She's so thin. Well. She's got good boobs. But even that, like, she doesn't have big, fake, you know what I mean? No, yeah. she's got nice. Like regular girl real. boobs. Yeah. Good regular for her. girl boobs. Well, you know what I mean? Like, if you, <laughs> no. if you see that footage, you know what I'm talking about. They're like little floppers that are, because she's kicking and punching. It is funny. It's funny, but it's not like. She's not knocking anybody out with her rack. She doesn't have like a movie star body. She's got like a like a it's not a knock. She's got like a regular person's body, which basic, is good. Basic bitch body. That's also good for comedy. It wouldn't be funny if she had some like Jessica Rabbit body cuz it'd be distracting. Well, it would just be I don't think that would be funny. So, who knows? I mean, Maybe people will get out to see this movie because of that. But those movies are, it's hard to make those kinds of movies to where people will go see them. Well, when, um, it wasn't a fight scene, but when Jason Siegel did the fully frontal nude and forgetting Sarah Marshall, yeah. that was a huge deal. Yeah. And all Cause he, he did, had a little, he had a little mushroom cap. Well, he pulls his towel apart and shakes it around and that's like the whole thing. Right. And then they, that, well, I guess I it is a fight scene, but not a physical fight scene because that's when she breaks up with him. <laughs> He's standing there naked right. trying to process getting broken yeah. up with. Right. But I think those movies are, star those kinds of movies are starting to make money now. So I think that's why, like there was that movie Blockers with John Cena mm -hmm. where they were like, we don't want our daughters going out and getting laid. You know, that movie made money. That's where people started to pay attention to John Cena being funny. And this Bottoms movie that's coming out looks funny. And, you know, so I'd love to see a resurgence of those movies. Because that would mean that people were stop, beginning to stop complaining so goddamn much about what is and isn't funny. It'd be fun to watch those kinds of movies. Back in the day, we had Porky's and, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know. Well, even in the early 2000s, like... 40-year-old virgin and like American crashers, Pie, yeah. American girl, pie girl, next door. girl next door. I yeah. mean, any of those teenage coming up, like 10 Things I Hate About You, that they were all about the guy who couldn't get laid. Right. You know what I mean? But like, those were, but the new ones are like R-rated. Like this Jennifer Lawrence movie is an R-rated comedy. Yeah. And I think that's what people are like, cool. Because then they can do well, like something bad. about Mary type mm -hmm. stuff. 
There was a lot of R-rated. I, yeah, I mean, Step and Brothers? again, this is 20 years ago. Yeah. Super, well, the, the, those came out, what, 2004, 2005? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was Super Bad R? Yeah. Yeah. Really? There were a lot yeah, very, of cussing yeah. and oh, okay. drinking and all kinds of stuff. I don't know that there were any boobs. Cussing oh, and drinking. Emma Stone was in there, right? That was yeah. kind of when people yeah, started to pay like, attention yeah, to her. Her, like, breakout. Yeah. Anyway, that uh, scene is on Reddit.